Well, thank you, Boogie. Um, so we're going to just keep it moving with our first presentation. And uh, as Boogie shared, we have a, a great customer example here. Uh, our first speaker comes from MedDecision, which is a company that is actually changing healthcare through software as a service. And what they're solving for is the challenge of moving from an installed packaged software world to SaaS. And they're doing that with the help of the Rackspace Managed Cloud and Object Rocket. Uh, here is a little bit more, a quick video on what MedDecision is, is doing. Our core business is scaling daily, and I think Rackspace's ability to provide us with repeatable processes, we're not constantly building something from scratch. That's allowed us to free up resources to focus on servicing our customers. MedDecision is working in the health management space. We're trying to have better health care processes. We develop a software platform that allows our healthcare practitioners and providers to provide more efficient care for their patients and their caregivers. Rackspace hosts all of our infrastructure. We've had no downtime, no SLA violations from any of our applications. Rackspace has eliminated those concerns from our perspective. They're able to stand up our environments for us and really do all the front end work that we typically have done in the past. Rackspace has really helped me solve my resource constraints that I have. So I'm able to actually focus on the other things and help drive the business at MedDecision. All right, so please uh, join me in welcoming the Director of Architecture from MedDecision, Morali Karakunda. Thank you. Good morning. My name is uh, Murali Kurukunda. I am from uh, Philadelphia. And uh, today I'm here to talk about how we have solved for big data problem at MedDecision and continue to solve big data problem at MedDecision. A little bit about the company before I get into the big data. MedDecision has been in the business for about 26 years now and continue to go strong. We have data for about, we serve basically about 46 million patients and members, and about 140,000 doctors and doctor's offices users use our applications. And we also have a solution called Aerial Platform, about uh, $145 million investment so far, and continues to, um, we continue to invest. The platform itself, right, so we started in the insurance company business, right, so with their workflows, the app was doing a few things for them, like care management, I'll get into the details a little bit, and also utilization management, right, so if you were to go to a doctor's office and ask for prior authorization behind the covers, they're using our app to say, yeah, this person can go for his chiropractic visit like three days versus five days, and so those kinds of things. And also, if somebody is diabetic and they want to manage the patient's health, they'll use med decision software. So we have today a lot of apps, right? This solution portfolio contains a lot of apps that we have built. And one of the things I'm going to talk about today, sorry, is this uh, EPHR app. So this has the information about a patient 360 view. So because we have a lot of data, we are able to put together what the person is all about, right? All the information that we know about that person is represented in this one patient record. So it's not the EMR, it's not the, uh, what the typical EMRs have, it's a lot more than what the EMRs have. Then we also have the platform that is covering all that. Sorry. So the goal, the problem we have been talking about solve here, so the problem that we have solved and continue to solve is how do you like go from this pair-based business that has been like started uh, the evolution with being the client server app to web app, like so we have been migrating. Now the, the goal for us was to build the next generation platform. And the initial use cases given to the technology team were build a Facebook app for healthcare, build this uh, patient 360 view app for all these 46 million people. How do you actually crunch the numbers and show this information, 
make this information available to the users, and then also build, while you're at it, also build uh, survey monkey on steroids, right? So in this business, we do a lot of like surveys to say, hey, this is the assessment, like government mandates and, and a lot of other reasons. They keep asking, right? When you go to the doctor's office, they keep asking you the questions again and again and again and again. So it's so a very, very complicated business, right? So survey monkey on steroids this Facebook for healthcare, where we would like to show the health timeline for the patient and also let the patient's care team start messaging within the app. So secure messaging combined with Facebook-like timeline feature, but about your health, right? So this person was admitted to the ER at this time. He went to the hospital at this time. So everything is shown on a timeline. So it's very easy for the care team to view and see basically like uh, better coordinate the care. We also have this uh, patient 360 view where we are able to say the users of the app, and again the enterprise users, right, the doctors, nurses, and the care coordinators, care navigators, are able to see this person is Renee Brown, she has these conditions, her risk score is four, and her insurance company details are here, and these are the few visits that she had, right, to their emergency room visits and the, the doctor's visit. So this was the problem given to us, right? So these were the use cases. And how do you go about building a platform or the microservices architecture that supports these applications? So what we came up with is um, we knew, like, there's a mix of mobile and the desktop applications, browser-based applications and the mobile applications. And we knew we could not survive with building this one big monolithic app. Right? So we need to break this in into like features. So we built the microservices based for the REST APIs. And then we also needed to choose a solution that works across the devices. Right? So both your iPads, iPhones, and as well as the browsers. So this is the technology stack that we came up with. We said we're going to use uh, Node.js. And we're going to use AngularJS for now. And the things seem to be like changing every day there. And then the, this talk is all about the MongoDB, right? So you know, why we chose MongoDB is uh, we wanted to develop these apps fast, right? So our number one reason for choosing MongoDB as the technology is like the their development time is much faster compared to any of the rest of the database technologies. Then we also have the need for flexibility in the data model, right? So the SurveyMonkey app I talked about, right? So with the relational database technology, we have the software running for 25 years, right? So the, the logic for branching, right? The questions branching, the logic for rules-based execution, the logic for offline support, Things get complicated, and as soon as you have multiple levels of branching, things get slowed down, right? So you have to do like, okay, as you cannot do more than six joins, right, to be able to perform. So we chose the document-based uh, uh, data model. Then, obviously, it's uh, easier to scale out. The journey itself is like it's not that easy just to move from your JSF, uh, Spring, Hibernate, and Oracle-based architecture to now AngularJS, Node, MongoDB architecture. So we had to do a lot of uh, um, due diligence. So we rolled out MongoDB, basically saying we had to prove out to both the technology teams and the non-technology teams and say, hey, this is the chosen technology for us, for our use cases. So I did a lot of research. This is a slide that I put together about like 12 to 18 months ago and showed people like, okay, this is what uh, people are doing in Stack Overflow and it's very, very active and compared to Cassandra and uh, CouchDB and a few others. On the rollout itself, right, so it's not, again, as I said, it's not, it's a very, very difficult exercise to just switch the technologies like that. So we started with a few prototypes we designed the document models over multiple iterations, and these iterations are like uh, one or two week long. And we say, yep, this is the mobile app for you. This is what, or this is, is this what you guys are thinking about in terms of the business? And we also purchased the MongoDB Inc. Pers uh, prescription, 
right? So you definitely need to like have expert advice along the way, right? We, we were learning MongoDB and we said, yeah, it's better to get a subscription from MongoDB Inc. The good thing about this MongoDB Inc's uh, subscription is they come up with a, they, they give you an expert and they do the production health check, right? Before you go into production and it's like two days worth of activity and it was very good. Then we also, just to be safe, right? So we want to make sure, we wanted to make sure we're on the right track. We purchased like uh, one day of consulting. We liked the guy and we said, okay, let's uh, get two more days out of this guy, right? So because he had, uh, he did a lot of critiquing of our code. <laughs> so we had to rewrite a lot of things. Then we went with Object Rocket, right? So we had multiple sessions with Object Rocket team. Uh, the, the goals were like two, four, right? So we wanted to give them an opportunity to see what we are doing so they can help us manage better. And then we also wanted to get their feedback as well, right? So we just didn't want to go with one expert advice. So we wanted uh, multiple opinions. And there was a lot of feedback and sometimes conflicting feedback, right? MongoDB guy said, don't do this in terms of short key. And object rocket experts say this. And it's like, wow, this is amazing. And again, like, uh, it's all about use cases. There's no uh, cookie cutter approach for these recommendations. So that was, uh, that was good learning for us. And of all these use cases, the biggest in terms of the data was that uh, patient 360 view I talked about, right? So we, and if everything were to go smooth, that was the last use case for us. But because of the change in business priorities, like that happens to go to production first, right? So we are changing the architecture, we're changing the technologies, and we are going into production with the biggest of our use cases, right? So the mobile app with few thousand users would have been a lot easier to scale than this biggest, like run this analytics on the entire population and produce me a view a 360 view or 360 wall for the each and every patient. So this is where like Object Rocket came in and helped us big time, right? Because we wanted to go in an evolutionary approach and because of change in priorities of the business, we were forced to go with um, uh, Aerial Hub, as we call it, to production. Project itself is much bigger than um, MongoDB and just a simplified view of our architecture, right? So we get uh, data, and this is the data about all these patients that I talked about, right? So their claims data, their medications, their labs, their, uh, their uh, data from EMRs, right? So we ingest the data and we validate, we enrich, and we store the data to, be, to analyze, and then we put, put this data through multiple processes, right? So this is the this is where we do a lot of uh, number crunching, risk models, various algorithms, uh, both predictive and prognostic. So we use a few third-party vendors as well. Once all that is done, we get the data back into MongoDB, and then we make it available via the APIs. So before we did this, and again, like this is, um, the company is in business for 26 years, so we used to do this, and we, we are experts at this before the data latency was like 60 days, right? So the claims data would come in a month later and we take multiple days to process the data and make it available to the users. Now it's uh, down to one day and our goal is to make it more even driven and more real time. But it's huge shift, right? In terms of being able to cut the latency from 60 days to one day. And as I said, we cut the multiple days of processing time running all these analytics engines, both ours and third parties, into few hours. And we also changed the architecture, right? lots and lots of ETL, Blaze rules engine, and this and that, a lot of legacy stuff we are scared to touch. And we are on the newer stacks, right? So you see a lot of like uh, technologies here because the problem is really big. So we basically choose uh, the best horse for the course. Today we have a single MongoDB database that has about like 1.8 billion records. Actually, I have a, in the next slide I have more numbers here. The infrastructure, again, the infrastructure is uh, uh, managed by Object Rocket team from Rackspace. So we, our first use case, we have um, 
of the 46 million, we have the 17 million people in the system, right? So I'm one of the customers. And to support it, we have uh, 20 shards, and the total size is 4.4 terabytes, and it's still growing. And again, amazing, amazing help from these experts, right? So if you look at the shard distribution and the way we went about like choosing the shard keys and all the best practices, we have about like 2.9 billion records now. Uh, I guess uh, average growth is like 16.5 gigabytes. And I put this one here, reads and writes, right? For our use case, MongoDB, our use case is more about the reads. And these numbers are not reflecting it yet, but they will. Um, so we do a lot of number crunching and we make the data available to the users, right? So this particular use case is more read heavy than the write heavy, right? Once you analyze the processes and once you store the data in, then you're done, right? So, but now, now make the users utilize this information as power and help the patients. What did we go with object rocket offering? Right? We could have easily gone with MongoDB Inc's subscription. Again, we like those guys too. And we have a lot of ta talented people in the team. And initially, I wasn't in for object rocket offering, right? So just uh, being a techie myself, like big no-no to manage services, right? So we could do it ourselves. The, the slowly, like what made me turn around is the access to the Mon Mon Mongo masters. And of course we cannot employ, right? So we had people, we learned the MongoDB in the past 12 months, right? So access to experts was really big, right? I mean, it's a, uh, it's an easy thing. I wasn't the guy that's asking for managed services, so somebody like gave it to us. That's uh, so you didn't have to fight for that budget. So this use case I talked about, right? So we we cut down the latency to one day, and we have a lot of processes running here, and we would like to make it more event driven, right? So we the next steps. For this project is we wanted to introduce Hive and the Hadoop ecosystem and the Spark. Basically, we want to use the latest and greatest technologies. And being that would not have been a pragmatic approach to just jump in with it. So we are going. We we chose a use case to introduce the Hadoop ecosystem for us. So the next step for us is now we have the data from multiple sources, and we are loading the data into HDFS. And we also have lots of existing reports and dashboards. So we are re-architecting this to go against Hive, right? Because of the technology limitations of the teams, right? So we are a very heavy, reporting team is heavy on like ETL technologies. Like we cannot just come in and say, hey, you can write it better in MapReduce and it'll be faster. So we chose in Hive, we are building this and And Rackspace actually helped us uh, set up a Hadoop cluster, and this is going to go to production by the end of the year, this Hive-based use case. And the goal is not just the Hive and stop, uh, not just stop at Hive use case with Hadoop. We want to do a lot more event-driven analytics. <coughs> so this was really good. I mean, the free part was the best, <laughs> right? So, so we have... Uh, one of our customers' data in the system, and we are able to like basically like recreate the whole system. Right now, we are going through the process of getting it reviewed by the experts at Rackspace and redo our designs and redo our implementation of uh, these MapReduce jobs. Also, wanted to touch a little bit about our disaster and recovery. So, unfortunately for us, the system went down for a someone accidentally deleted our database in production, right? And this is an amazing story. This is the story that made me turn around, like why managed services is good, right? And so that was really bad. So the, around 5 o'clock, <laughs> around 5 p.m., the systems go down. And luckily for us, like it was at the beginning of the rollout, and not many users were online, and it's their time to leave. Right, they, they were about to leave, and it's like, oh, 10 minutes, not many people noticed the system went down. 
Rackspace and Object Rocket guys who spent the next 10 hours to 12 hours. And we didn't have DR yet. I mean, we're still working on our DR budgets and whatnot. They spent the uh, next 10 hours restoring it. So they had to write a lot of custom code to say, hey, from this backup and from this op log, and before the users came in online the next day, everything was back to normal. Everything. We didn't you lose a single record. Amazing, amazing feat. I mean, it's, it was really bad when it was happening, but when you look at hindsight, it was, and it's totally worth it. Right? It's having an expert who can actually like, be there for you. Again, this was something that was, I mean, I don't wish that to happen to anybody, but it happened. But the fact that we were able to recover, it, it was worth it for us. That's it. Thank you.